How much water should you drink when you're running? Well, that kind of depends. How much do you sweat? Hi guys, welcome back to the Adaptive Zone podcast. My name is Matthew Boyd. I'm a physiotherapist and running coach. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're so inclined, share it with a friend. Today, we're going to be talking about hydration, specifically how to develop a customized hydration strategy for you. Before we get into that, we're going to be adding today's episode to my Running Fundamentals course. This is a free online course designed to teach runners the fundamentals of race preparation and performance. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, just click the link in the description and enter your name and email and I will send you one module each week. So today's question is, how much water should you drink while running? Well, to answer that question, we're going to need to know how much fluid you lose when you're running. Some runners can lose as much as two liters of fluid per hour, and some runners lose as little as 200 milliliters. This is quite a difference. To make things more complicated, sweat rates can vary within the same runner. If it's plus 30 degrees Celsius, you'll sweat a lot more than you would if it's minus 30 degrees Celsius. Similarly, if you're doing sprint intervals, you're going to sweat a lot more than you would if you're just doing an easy recovery run. As you can see, trying to give generic advice on how much fluid you should drink while you're running is a fool's errand. So what we really need to do is work out how you decide how much fluid you need to drink while you're running. This is where the sweat rate test comes in. All we need is a bathroom scale. You're going to put the scale by the front door and get ready for your run. Then you're going to put on your hydration pack or hold your bottles and stand on the scale. Then you've got to set the scale to metric. Now, hold on. If you're American, don't worry. There is a good reason that we're going to set it in metric, okay? So just set the scale to kilograms for just a minute. You can switch it right back to pounds when we're done. So set the scale to kilograms and weigh yourself right before you run, holding the bottles and wearing your hydration pack. And if you're taking any gels or fuel with you on the run, you want hold all of that too, and then weigh yourself. And let's say with all of that on, you weigh 80 kilograms. Now, when you get back from your run, you're going to weigh yourself again. And importantly, you're going to have half drunk bottles of water. Your hydration pack is going to be half empty. Maybe you ate some gels and not others. You want to keep everything on you in terms of fluid and fuel. You want to take off your t-shirt and towel off so that any excess sweat on your skin is off, but then still holding all of your hydration stuff. You're going to put yourself back on the scale and see what you weigh. Let's say in this case, you weigh 79 kilograms. That means that you sweat out one kilogram of sweat during that one hour run. That would make your sweat rate one liter per hour because you lost one kilogram of sweat during that one hour run. A kilogram weighs one liter. So if you lost one kilogram, you lost one liter of sweat and it was a one hour run. Now, let's say you did the same thing for a two hour run and say you lost two kilograms, then you would just take that two liters of fluid, divide it in two, and that's one liter per hour that you've lost. Then we're going to need to repeat that regularly in different conditions. So when it's hot, when it's cold, when you're running fast, when you're running slow, and you want to document all of that, your sweat rate per hour on all those different kinds of runs. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I've made a little spreadsheet that you can download. Just click the link in the description Now, to make this all a little bit easier, I have put a link in the description to a spreadsheet so you can download that and enter all your details. It'll work out exactly what your sweat rate is. Now, the next question is, do you need electrolytes for your run? So, there are lots of different electrolytes in our sweat that we lose when we're running, but the only one that we really need to worry about is sodium. Sodium makes up part of sodium chloride, which is salt, which is why our sweat tastes salty. Now, depending on how hard you're running and how hot it is, you may need to replenish some of the sodium that you're losing when you're running. The problem is that some people will lose a lot of sodium per liter of sweat and some will only lose a little bit. So again, we need to develop a specific strategy for you. Sodium losses can vary in runners anywhere from 200 milligrams per liter to 2000 milligrams per liter. Again, this is a massive spread. So you need to know how salty is your sweat? How much sodium are you losing? Now, the gold standard here would be to get a sweat rate test and precision fuel and hydration offer sweat tests in a range of locations. However, if there isn't a sweat test near you, then there is a way that you can estimate how salty your sweat is without having to go for a sweat test. 
I recently had Andy Blow, who is the founder of Precision Fuel and Hydration, on the Adaptive Zone podcast, and he gave us five questions that we can use to determine if our saltiness of our sweat is low, medium, or high. So these are Andy's five questions. So the five questions are, does your sweat taste salty? Do you feel faint or suffer head rushes when you're exercising in the heat? Do you suffer from muscle cramps after long periods of exercising, particularly in the heat? Do you feel terrible after exercising in the heat? And do you crave salty foods or find them particularly tasty after you've been running in the heat? Based on these answers, we can determine if your sweat is high, medium, or low in terms of saltiness, in terms of sodium loss. High saltiness or high sodium loss would be answering yes to four or five out of the five questions. Moderate saltiness will be answering yes to two or three of those questions and low saltiness or low sodium losses would be answering yes to only one or two of those five questions. Now, the average athlete loses just under 1,000 milligrams of sodium per liter in their sweat, but this is an average. So depending on if you're high, medium, or low in terms of sodium losses based on the answers to those questions, we can estimate how much you're going to be losing. So if you're high saltiness or high sodium loss, that's probably going to put you in the ballpark of about 1,500 milligrams of sodium lost per liter of sweat. Medium would be 1,000 milligrams of sodium lost per liter of sweat and 500 would be a low amount or low saltiness low sodium loss per liter of sweat now i answer yes to three out of these five questions so i would drop myself in the moderate saltiness bucket or the moderate sodium loss bucket so i'm going to estimate that my sodium losses are about 1000 milligrams of sodium per liter of sweat so if we combine this with my sweat rate, which we estimated was about one liter per hour, we also know my sodium losses being moderate are about a thousand milligrams per liter. So I'm losing about a liter of fluid per hour when I'm exercising, and there's about a thousand milligrams of sodium in that liter of fluid. Now you know roughly how much fluid you're losing and how much sodium you're losing. So the question is, how much of it are you gonna try and replace? Now, this is a hotly debated topic in the sports science world, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and lean on Andy's advice, which is to start by replenishing about 50% of your fluid and sodium losses per hour, and then work from there and see how it goes. So if we take my example from before, I'm losing about a liter of fluid per hour when I sweat. Within that liter of fluid, I've lost a thousand milligrams of sodium. I'm going to replace about 500 milliliters of water per hour because that's 50% of what I lost. In the water that I'm going to drink, I want about 1,000 milligrams per liter of sodium. So I'm going to buy sodium tablets or electrolyte tablets that are 1,000 milligrams per liter. I'm going to put those in my water and then I'm going to drink about 500 milliliters per hour. And that is my hydration strategy. So 500 milliliters per hour, 1,000 milligrams per liter of sodium. And that's what I drink on my long runs and runs in the heat. Now, Andy goes to great length to emphasize that this is only a starting point and that you need to experiment, replenishing different amounts, 50%, 60%, 70%, 30%, 20%, and then just see how it feels. You can increase the sodium concentration up and down. You can increase the amount of fluid you're replacing or decrease it and see what works. Now, last year, I did a lot of experimenting with this and I found that that worked about right. So I replace about 50% of the fluid I lose and I use those 1000 milligram sodium tablets and that seems to work just fine for me. The most important part about this is that you realize that this is very individual. So you're going to use a process of trial and error and you're gonna record your results to make sure that you're gradually dialing in on a hydration strategy that works for you. Like I said earlier, I have an article in the description that goes through all of this and it has a link to a spreadsheet so that you can enter your own fluid losses and work out your sweat rate. It also has those five questions that I mentioned before that you can go through and determine if you're a low, medium or high saltiness or high sodium loss in your sweat. So just click the link in the description, enter your name and email address and you'll get that spreadsheet. So to sum up, the way we want to approach hydration is to get a good starting point by understanding our sweat rate. We can use a simple test with a bathroom scale to do that, weighing yourself before and after a one hour run, holding your drinks and seeing what the loss in weight is. You're gonna measure it in kilograms, whatever you're losing kilograms, it's the same amount of liters that you lost. 
and then that'll give you your sweat rate. Answer the Andy's five questions to work out whether your saltiness of sweat is high, medium, or low. That'll tell you whether you need to get 500, 1,000, or 1,500 milligrams sodium uh, electrolyte tablets. With those two pieces of information and a gradual iterative approach, you can develop your very own specific hydration strategy that works for you.